In today's video, we're going to look at QNAP's QSW11088T. It's an 8 port, 2.5 gigabit switch. If you want to learn more about how this device can upgrade your network and see how it performs, then stick around for the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications icon so you'll know when there's new content. Full disclosure, QNAP did send me this unit to test out, but they haven't paid me for this review, nor have they had any influence in any way. The opinions and the results are my own, and they're going to see this for the first time just as you're seeing it. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the hardware. Back in 2020, I tested the 5-port version of this switch and still use it to this day for testing many of my 2.5 gigabit devices. In practice, 5 ports is a bit too tough to work with as you lose one port for the uplink to your other switch or routers, leaving you only really four ports for devices. Enter the QSW11088T, which increases that number to eight ports, giving you much more room to attach more devices of either two and a half or one gigabit, making this much more useful for your setup. The QSW11088T is an eight port unmanaged switch that has eight RJ45 ports. The switch has a switching capacity of about 40 gigabits per second, giving you the ability to use each port at full speed. We'll talk more about this during the testing. Before we test this, let's take a quick look at what comes in the box, as well as a quick overview of the hardware. In the box, you get the switch itself, mounting screws if you intend to wall mount or desk mount the switch, the power supply, and the appropriate adapter for your country, which for me was the US version. Looking at the front of the switch, you get eight two and a half gigabit ports and the 12 volt input powered. Over on the left, you get the status LED, power LED, and as the device has loop detection, you also get a loop detection error LED indicating when there's a problem. If you're not familiar with loop detection, when a switch sends out a loop protocol packet and then receives it back, it shuts down that port that it received the packet from, preventing further problems in your network and avoid bringing things down. The device is completely fanless and all the cooling comes from the side and the rear vents. The included power supply is a standard 12 volt power supply rated at 18 watts. So should anything happen to the power supply, you should be able to get a replacement as this isn't really a proprietary supply, which I kind of like. You also get the four rubber feet as this switch is primarily designed for desktop or shelf configurations, though many people actually mount these on either the wall or on the bottom of their desks. I'm always interested on how things are designed, especially fanless designs. So I quickly removed the three screws that hold the cover on to reveal the internal design just to take a look at it. I was really impressed with the overall construction of the device, especially the way they shielded the ports and mounted the heat sinking. I've seen low cost devices that were poorly designed. So in this case, at least the mechanicals are designed well and built particularly well. Okay, now that we've covered the hardware, let's do a quick speed test and to see if it performs as expected. I can't test every combination, but I will test the performance of copying between two devices as well as sharing one uplink port with two additional devices. It helps if you know how these switches work. For starters, the 2.5 gigabit rating is a per port rating, meaning that if you have two devices attached, the devices will be able to talk to each other at the full speed of two and a half gigabits per second in full duplex. For example, if you have three devices attached and two of the devices are copying data from one device, the two and a half gigabit will be shared as the one device can't exceed the two and a half gigabit total. However, if you have four devices attached and the first device is copying data to the second device, while the third device is copying data to the fourth device, so all four will be able to run at full speed since they're not sharing any one particular device. This is why the capacity rating on a switch is important. On this device, the 40 gigabit per second capacity rating comes from each port capable of two and a half gigabits per second in full duplex, making that effectively five gigs of combined data through each port times the eight ports that are available, giving you a total of 40 gigabits per second. For my testing, I used two laptops, both with two and a half gigabit network adapters. Using only one laptop, I copied files from the NAS unit. And as you can see from the short test, 
The switch performs as advertised and is capable of maintaining a speed through the sustained copying. To demonstrate a little bit of the bandwidth sharing, I used the two laptops to copy from that same NAS. And as you can see, when I start to copy the second laptop, the speed starts to fluctuate and drop off as it's sharing between and putting data through both devices. Despite the fluctuation in the speed, it still remains overall higher than a standard one gigabit network connection. Keep in mind that I'm hitting this with enough data to saturate the ports, so overall the switch performs really, really well. This is probably a higher data throughput than you'd see in normal use. If you have a 2.5 gigabit NAS, a server, or other 2.5 gigabit devices, the switch will be a great upgrade for your network, especially if you want the simplicity of plug and play and don't want to manage switch. Overall, I was really impressed with this device and it was really super easy to use. Anyway, that's about it for this short video, and if you found this useful, please give it a like. I want to thank the team at QNAP for sending me this unit to review. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.